Um, you know what? I'm in heels and this is awesome. Do you guys mind? No. No, I saw the stage, but I'm gonna. We're scared. lazy too, so don't worry. What? We're lazy too, so don't worry. Oh, I thought you said you were in heels too. I was like, oh, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever tickles a pickle, man. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Um, First of all, I guess I'll start off just saying my name is Brittany Karbowski, and uh, I do various roles in anime for uh, ADV Films, Priorly, who is now uh, Seraphim, Sentai Filmworks, and uh, for Funimation Entertainment, and sometimes Ocatron and all kinds of other fun stuff. So um, I also do regular acting, just uh, you know, uh, live action, and I um, other things like that. So. Yes, um, and really this is mostly just going to be whatever, you guys just ask some questions, you know, one of those kind of panels. So, I don't like to hear myself talk anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, uh, does anyone have any questions for me? What is probably your most favorite character you play? And people always ask me that, but the thing is, is that like when you do this, every time that you do one character, you're doing at least three characters probably at once. So you, you know, and so you might be doing maybe three different roles in two different studios. And each character that you have, you kind of put a little bit of you into it. You know, like when you you when you play a role, you're you're you know what I mean? Like there's still there's still you in there. Even though you have these guidelines that the Japanese set, like they've already done a voice and they've already done the animation, and you have to match these flaps and you have to say these words. So you don't have freedom in those ways. Er, those ways, wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have freedom in that way, but um, you have the freedom to, I guess, put a little bit of you in it. So every time, you know, if, if you love yourself, you love, you, you know, you love... So I, I kind of just love all my characters. I don't have one that I love more than another. But there's some, like, when you're doing three, where you like the most out of the three, you know? And so, and then there's some that just kind of stick with you for whatever reason. Like, I really love Blackstar because he was my first boy character that I ever played, and he was awesome. And um, I was actually, when I auditioned for that, I would, uh, they sent me that one, right? They sent me the boy. I never auditioned for a boy. I never played a boy. I was like, why did they send me this? It's like, it must have been a mistake. I'm gonna do it. And uh, I was really just kidding, mostly. I was making fun of my little brother. I just like did the craziest, weirdest thing ever. You know, just joking around, but they really liked it. And uh, uh, when I went in there, I just like, it was, it was very difficult to me, for me, and um, I had to, it, it was a lot of effort. And for, I, I'd been doing it for a really long time, so you, you know, you kind of get the hang of it after a certain while. So doing the girl voices, I, I got the hang of that, you know, so, but it was, it was very adventurous and very challenging, and um, I just like to put a lot of heart and soul and sweat into it. You know, so I really, really loved him. And I did uh, Pride and Full Metal or Alchemist Brotherhood after that, which so uh, also those are both kind of boy characters that I really loved playing. Um, but I mean, there's so many girl characters, so I don't, yeah, uh, I don't know, you know. I loved Fuko from Gilgamesh, which was one of the first things I ever did. And it was very different. Um, the director, uh, Stephen Foster, really wanted it to be authentic. And so, um, he had like skeletal trees and I don't know, just like uh, candles hanging and uh, sculptures that were all broken and you had to wear black to record. <laughs> and like it was because it was a dark show, you really got in the mood and it was just, it's, it was very different from most animes and for it to be one of my first, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, and so um, it, was, it was totally different and um, all the palette was like, uh, browns and grays and shades of red and black. It was just, it was beautiful. It was just a really great show. Um, and so, you know, I love her because she was like my first big thing that I did. But, you know, I loved uh, Himeko and Pony Pony Dash. She was so fun. Oh I love her. Um, I, but, you know, more recently, it's not, it's hard to pick a after a while, you know, like, I love them all a little bit. Like, I love Yuri and Angel Beats. She was really fun. She was, I like to be militant. That's nice. Um, I mean, all of them. There's not really, I don't know. They're hard to pick. So, so that's the most difficult question ever. <laughs> but it's good. It was good. I could rant for a while about nothing. <laughs> yes? Well, what character gave you your favorite line that you've ever said? Mm. Well, I used to say um, Fugo. 
Cause, uh, but she, cause she had like a really um, line that was totally not racy, but it sounded racy, um, just because it, out of context, you know. But um, now I think that uh, I don't know. I like all of them. Each one, you know, like I, I, you know, I'll be like, oh, Cannon, I love saying Ugu. I'm not a boy, you know. Ugu, I'm not a boy. I loved that. That was really fun. Um, so it's like every character. There's something that I like to do, you know. Him echo my. You know, like I love that. So, what did you like from Black Star? Um, actually, my favorite line from Black Star is whenever um, they're trying to find Sid, and they find Sid's grave in the graveyard. Oh yeah. And when they had me saying this, I was like, "Can I say this? Is this appropriate to say? Should I say this?" <laughs> like, really? And then I was like, "I can say this." And they were like, they took alternate words because they ended up saying the word "piss," which is kind of racy. And then, um, but they took alternate words of like "spit" and whatever. But that the racy word actually ended up in it. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, surprise!" But um, he goes up to the grave and he's like. <laughs> Is that Sid's grave? <laughs> we should piss on it. <laughs> and that is most definitely the funniest thing. I love that. But I also like that. I like two scenes from that that are also my favorite. Is um, of course the one with Death the Kid, and uh, he's like Black Star Soul, and he's like, Can I shoot them? <laughs> I love that one a lot. Yeah, that one was great. It was hilarious. But oh my gosh. I just couldn't believe it in the Japanese. Um, it was like, because whenever somebody records first before you, their stuff is in there. But if somebody hasn't recorded, you're going to hear the Japanese. And so uh, Micah had recorded. So his uh, souls, or, or his black stars were in there, but my souls were still in Japanese. And he's hitting these registers I've never heard a man hit before. I'm like, what the heck? He's like, blah! So I'm like, what? It was crazy. And I was laughing because of that. And I'm laughing because the Japanese character is going, so. I'm like, what? It's over and over again. So I can't stop laughing. And I couldn't record it for like a whole minute at least. I was just like, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I love that. That was hilarious. And he's like, can we still be friends? And has all the bubbles. Oh man, that was ridiculous. That was, it was kind of just out of context and hilarious in the middle of the show, right? It just kind of came out of nowhere. That's what I really like about Soul Eater is that it just, it catches you off guard all the time. It doesn't, there's nothing you can like expect from it. Like even the music is really like hip and new okay. and the, the drawing style is even different, you know? It's, a, it's just a, I like all of it. It's a really creative show and he threw out it. And you know how like a lot of shows are very creative and then the last couple episodes you're like, man, you know, there's some of them that you're like, what happened at the end? And all they did was have a picnic. I wanted them to fight with swords. But you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But this one was awesome throughout. All the, all the way to the end, it's, every single episode is awesomeness. And uh, I, I really think the show is awesome sauce. <laughs> yes? Um, when you first got a chance to look at the Vigata HK script, what was your initial reaction? Like, the, the very first time you heard about it? I loved it. <laughs> it was the greatest thing that has ever happened. And if everybody was old enough, I would say go watch it, you know, and I think you probably got to be a certain age to watch that show, but um, it doesn't have actually really, really bad nudity or anything like that. It's just that the words, the, the, with the thoughts, the ideas are hilarious, like a uh, middle school perverted way and a uh, kind of innocent way. They're hilarious, but wow, I love it. Um, and she's so bratty. She's so selfish. She always has these thoughts to herself about like these selfish things and the, the sweet, Kosada is so sweet and he's just like, I wonder if she wants me to hold hands, you know? And she's like thinking these awful, like horrible things in her mind and you're like, what? What is going on here? There were so many times that I was like, I get to say that? Can I take a picture with my phone at the script? Because nobody's going to believe me. No one is going to believe me that for my job, I could say that. That is awesome. So, um, <laughs> that, I love that show. I really, really hope it gains popularity because it is, it's so, it's so funny that my friends that don't even watch anime watch this show. They want to see it. They're like, okay, okay, put in Begotta HK. You know, and they're like, I see you and they're like, friends with pennies for the win. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's awesome. So, I don't know, and just even the beginning, she's just so rude to Kosa that she's just like, are you a cherry boy? I'm like, what? Wow, not even a hello, what's your name? Oh my gosh. And her thoughts are just horrible and funny. 
and very innocent and childlike, and so it's kind of awesome. But um, yeah, anybody else have a question? Hmm? Are you friends with a lot of other voice actors? I think all for, all voice actors are pretty much friends. Most of them know each other. There's some people you don't know. Like I don't know a lot of people from LA. I know a few. Um, but I know people from Texas. We don't record together in the booth, though, you know? But when we go to cons, we see him. So, yeah, I know. They're loud, they're good friends. Yes? Can you impersonate some of them? No. <laughs> and if I did, it would be mean and it wouldn't do justice. <laughs> I wish I could. Because um, some of them have really awesome voices. But see, if I could, then, you know, I would be like all knowing I here, so. <laughs> Anybody? Has somebody ever left a line for you in a booth where they just joked around with you and said something that was... A bomb? Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yeah, we call those bombs. Okay. Yes. Actually, I think some of my favorite bombs... Well, it depends. My favorite bombs are on the really sweet shows that are totally bubblegum pop, little kid, you know, like shows that, you know, like Save Me Lollipop. Or, um, because I played Nina in that, or, uh, what, what else, like, which, like, <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> okay, so we did, uh, Mermaid Melody, Pitchy Pitchy Pitch, and, uh, I played Hannah, yeah, and so, okay, so, wow, <laughs> there's this part where Taro's playing the piano all slow and drawn out, and it's so dramatic, and his face looks like he's really concentrating, and it made the best part noise, it sounded so realistic, <laughs> it was just like, Meh. <laughs> it looked so great! It apparently caught him really off guard. He was like, what? <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I, I guess I'm childlike like that. I like to leave those. Those are really fun. But sometimes you just change the lines, and you, or you just tell someone, like, you know, like, shut up or something when it's not expected, and they're like smiling, and you're like, shut up! <laughs> you know, or something like that. Or, but Sometimes people leave them for me, and I'm so focused on the next line, I don't even notice. I still record it. They're like, did you hear that? I'm like, oh, no, but replay that. That is kind of funny. Um, there's, uh, whenever we, we uh, did a recent show that I can't talk about yet, but I've, I've been working on recently up at Funimation, um, there's this cat in it. So I won't tell you anything because there's plenty of cats, but there's this cat in it, and the cat doesn't talk. Okay, the cat just meows. And all of a sudden, there's this cut of a cat, and it's like, oh yeah! <laughs> and it scared me so much. It was so great. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> scary cat. I think that's oh the new funniest one I've ever heard. No, oh yeah? Yeah, the, yeah, the like, Kool-Aid sound? Yeah, the, no, the because, um, I actually had the pleasure of uh, doing an interview with Josh Greeley. And uh, he told me one about Hero Tales because he does hosting in it. So, uh, have you seen Hero Tales? Or do you know? Uh, I don't think I've seen that one. All right. Well, basically, uh, his character is an archer. His name is Jose, and he uh, likes the main character's uh, sister. And when he gets into the room, the first thing he hears is right after the main character's line. Main character's line, so he can do his cue is, "Oh yeah, you can totally bone my sister." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of like uh, what the the kind of bombs people leave. They're always really horrible and some sweet character with bows in her hair. Um, I I don't know. Sometimes you don't. You, it's not even a bomb. Like you actually get to say something really horrible to your friend. That's hilarious. Like um, one of the, the first thing I ever did was uh, bit parts and Gantz, and I got to uh, talk crap about Chris Ayers, who's my very good friend, very very good friend, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, they, and they, it was supposed to be in Walla, and they didn't even drown it out. They turned it up and turned the rest of the people down, so you can distinctly hear me saying that something that he had was very small. It is hilarious. Um, but yeah, so sometimes you actually get to keep really funny things in there. Or they're like, turn up your Walla, and you're like talking about like uh, just really, really dumb things. I'm like, oh my god, did you pee on my shoe? How would you pee on my shoe? Because you're just like trying to talk in the background, you know? They just run it and you're just like, okay, how do I fill this space? Because it's going to be background noise. You just say whatever so that it's people talking at once, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> you're in a marketplace and then just say really random things like, oh yeah, I like this necklace. Do you like the necklace? Oh my god, I should choke you with this necklace. Like, oh, I choke with this necklace. You know? And, and sometimes I turn it up and you're like, why? Why did you do that? That's horrible. <laughs> So sometimes the funny stuff gets left in there. Um, I mean, there's sometimes like when the monsters are dying and stuff, they will uh, say really funny sayings and stuff, you know, like just, you know, just whatever. Like, 
I love cheese. And it won't be slowed down yet, it'll just be someone doing that because they won't have had the effect yet. So you're like, what? The monster just died and he said he loved cheese? What are you talking about? But yeah, that, sometimes that's pretty funny too. But then when they slow it down, it's like, do I love? You know, so it sounds like hilarious, but wow. Woo! So, anyway. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Um, I didn't actually start out trying to be a voice actor. I think most people, I, I can't say all, um, I think Michael Tatum was probably a composer first, actually. Um, but other than that, pretty much everyone I know was an actor first, just in general acting. Uh, a lot of the people theater, some of the people film. And uh, it was just another acting outlet. And I was doing a uh, show, the minute I turned 18, uh, the Ayers, <laughs> Chris Ayers was directing a show of the Rocky Horror Show, and uh, like the musical version. And I got cast as Janet, and uh, Chris Patton and Greg Ayers switched off as Frank Furter and Riff Raff. And uh, Eddie Dr. Scott was Monica Rial, and <laughs> it was a great cast. Just to, and these people I had acted with on stage all of them, most of them at uh, Country Playhouse in Houston when I was 15. Um, and uh, I had, so I'd acted with these people on stage, but I had, hello! But I had never, um, what is it? Like I had, uh, I had never acted with them anywhere else and I didn't know that they were voice actors. I didn't know what voice acting was. Just no exposure whatsoever, but, you know, I just didn't know. Um, and after I did one of the shows, uh, Matt Greenfield and his wife, Tiffany, are the pretty much founders of ADD, and uh, at the time ADD in Houston, and because uh, this is years ago, <laughs> but um, they came to see it, and they asked me to come in to do bit parts and Walla. I didn't know what Walla was, I didn't know what bit parts was, and I was like, oh, okay, you want me to sing? So I was a singer, you know, I, sa I sang in the show, you know, like so. Um, but no, like we want you to talk, like just talk, like yeah, just talk. And uh, when I went in, I, that was for the bit parts and Gantz. And um, I pretty much, they, they were like, he was like, okay, before we do anything, I'm gonna need you to scream like you're being stabbed to death. And I'm like, what? He's like, you gotta scream like you're being stabbed to death. Like, really stabbed to death. Can you do that? And I'm like, why? <laughs> He's like, because that's how I can tell if you can do this job or not. So, I mean, there's plenty of people who are very, very good in theater, but they just can't do that. They just, they, they don't do that on stage. And, and anime is nothing but screaming all the time. <laughs> different voices at different pitches. And every now and then you get one where you talk really quiet, like uh, Icarus in Heaven's Lost Property. But, um, so, yeah, they, he asked me to come in and I, I was like, oh, all right, I can do that. <laughs> I like freaked out and he was like, oh yeah, this is good. Okay, let's do this. You know, and that was it. And I, I did that and um, I think my first the part that was a principal was, was Gantz, or no, 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 was uh, uh, Gilgamesh. And then I think my first lead part was Jinky Extend. Uh, I played Alba, and then I think it just went from there, and I didn't start at Funimation until a few years ago. Uh, I did that pretty much a, a little bit before ADD had shut down. And now I work at Seraphim Sentai, which is, you know. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Any other questions? What's the um the funnest script you've ever had to uh, write for? Oh, I don't write scripts. Oh, you don't? I am not talented in that way. A lot of people oh. do as well. Um, I just do all facets of acting. Oh, okay. And uh, every now and then I'll get a, a small job to supplement income if you know it needs to happen. Yes. Have you ever acted in movies? I I have acted in movies. I've um. Just recently, I was in a uh, independent movie called Puncture. You can get it on Netflix, and uh, it was with Chris Evans, who plays Captain America. And it was really, really neat to meet him. And he was a very, very nice person. Um, and uh, I am in a few scenes, and I'm very proud. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm filming very soon Code of Evil, which is a sci-fi film. And uh, I'm in a few other films. There's quite a few. They're mostly smaller films and stuff, but, uh, but Puncture is a big one. Puncture is a good one. So if you guys get a chance, watch that. It's a very great movie.
It really is a very good movie. As a voice actress, do you find yourself when you're alone, like by mistake or for whatever reason, making like random noises or sounds or testing yourself? Um, in the beginning, I did do stuff like that. Um, one of the ways that I was taught uh, how to do Foley was to, because, you know, if you think about it, nobody really thinks about that you would have to, what you would have to do to get a sound like you're being punched in the stomach very hard or stabbed. When you're stabbed, it's not just a scream. You know, you're like, ha! <laughs> you know, like it's going to have that sound too. But you never think about how to do that. You, you really can't make it without doing some sort of motion. You can't you know, smile, you, you can't say, like, if your character's smiling, you have to smile. If you don't smile, it sounds stupid. You know, if she's waving, you need to wave. You know, you can be like, hi, or hi, and it sounds different, and the only thing that's different is your movement or what you're doing. You just have to make sure you don't make sounds. Because if you make sounds, it's not good. But if I, if I run, I have to lift my heels and actually go down on my heels so my diaphragm makes that sound like, because <laughs> if not, I just can't go, <laughs> it sounds stupid, right, you know? Um, or, you know, like, it, there's very, there's all kinds of those little, you know, when they have the breaths, but, but there's like the out, in, or there's the in, out, or there's the in, out, in, and those are all different kinds of breaths, and they're, you know, depending on what flaps you have to fill. So, you know, and then there's different kinds of gasps, because some of them are shocked, some of them are disgusted, and it's the exact same face, you know, but, but a shock, <laughs> and then, <laughs> And they're different sounds. And you have to make the face or you're not going to accomplish it. So people look really, really funny in the booth. Actually, Funimation at one time in their old studio had a video so we could like see ourselves. <laughs> Me as Blackstar. Wow. I was like crouched. They put the microphone really low and I like squatted. And I do this. <laughs> when I do this, it was really weird. I had to make like, I had to make his face or I can't do it. You know, like I don't know why. But, um, yeah, I don't know, and then, you know, if I'm, when I was playing Yamada, I was like, I had to put my hand on my hip. So that's just how it is. So, like, I don't, I don't know why, but, you know, everybody's kind of a different movement. It's pretty funny to watch people, actually, in there. But, um, yeah, I kind of got off from the original question. Yeah. It was, it was here. I'm over here. I took a right and a left. Um, but, yeah, so, whatever. <laughs> Anybody have another question? Okay, um, two questions. One, what would you say is the moment at a convention that you felt was really awesome? And another is, what would you say is the strangest thing you've ever encountered at a convention? Wow, um, really awesome. I think, well, I, I, um, at almost every convention I meet a new, you know, every convention I have people that are like just my friends, and it's really nice to meet new people every time and, you know, become friends with, with you know, not everybody's a fan, some people are just friends. You know, it's nice to have that. So that's a really great part about conventions. And every time, <laughs> you know, every time that people say, like, stories about bad things that happen in conventions, they don't mention how many great people they meet, how many people they love, you know? And they, they meet through this. You know, people meet their wives here, you know, and, and their husbands here. And, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a convention where you meet people that enjoy your same interests and you love each, you know, everybody has the same loves. And so it's really, you know, I don't know. It's a very great thing just to come to conventions at all. Um, the weirdest thing? Hmm, forehead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, really, she's like, can you saw my forehead? I was like, you are crazy. <laughs> but, um, uh, weird. I mean, there's, there's some weird things that happen. I guess you could just get, like, kind of immune to it, and you don't notice it's weird anymore. You're like, oh, that guy's wearing a phone. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Whatever. <laughs> you know? Or sure, I'll sign your yaoi paddle. <laughs> you know, and I mean, I can't say how many. I've had a lot of lesbian characters as well. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, I have characters that, like, uh, okay, uh, what is this? Magical Girls Club. I play Salsami. And oh my gosh, she is in love with Henri. And it is hilarious. Um, and I play this a girl, yeah, Yuri. I play a lot of Yuris that are, <laughs> makes sense. Haha. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it, it works out for my voice for some reason, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> you were talking about how it was weird because since you did a lot of, um... Oh yeah, well, I'm trying to think of a weird con experience, but weird? I don't know what's weird anymore, you know? I'm trying to think, but I don't know. I don't have any, like, really bad experiences. I had a horror, I have a horror story, though. 
I went to a convention that was actually in Florida. Yeah, actually the convention was great and the hotel was, oh my God. And um, I had a murder room, but I didn't know for a while that it was a murder room. So, okay, this is crazy, this is craziness. Okay, I'm not like a huge firm believer in like activist for ghosts or anything like that. But um, it was really cold in my room the whole time. The whole time it was cold. I couldn't figure it out. And the AC kept making a noise like click, 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 click. That sounded like, you know when the thing goes on and off? Yeah, it sounded like that, right? And there was no panel there to click it on and off. It was an automatic. Just plugged into the wall, right? So I'm like, what the heck? Um, I mean, I just looked at the top and I'm like, okay, there's no panel. It keeps making this noise. And it's icy cold in the middle of summer here. No way. In a hotel that has no rooms above it, no rooms uh, below it, and nothing on the sides, you know, to help it cool. So there's just no way that this could happen, right? And it was just really cold in there the whole time, and I kept complaining about it. So I was like, Tom, Tom was my handler, he's a really nice guy. I was like, Tom, come to my room, just sit there for a second. I just want you to see how cold it is, and I want you to hear the crazy machine that makes all this noise that I've been complaining about all weekend, right? Okay, so he sits there, and he's like, you know what? It is pretty creepy in here. And I can kind of see my breath, and that's really weird. Um, wow. And I mean, I mean, this place had. Let me just. Let me just. This pool. The pools had old tire pieces in them, and random machinery like a dump. What hotel oh, was this? <laughs> yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, it was really ridiculously run down. I can't even. I think they probably spent two cents each on their soaps that they left in the rooms. Like two cents even, not even. Maybe a penny. Maybe. Um, and okay, so and, uh, anyway, like I was saying, so he's sitting in the room, and I'm sitting in the bed, and he's like, <gasps> and I'm like, what? He's like, oh, lift up your head. And I'm like, okay, and he's like, lift up your head. And I turned around, and I was like, oh, that's really gross. There's like this part of the headboard that's been cleaned with like something that removed the varnish, like bleach. And uh, it has like little pieces of hair in it and reddish brown tissue things. That's creepy. And I was like, wow, that is, uh, wow. <laughs> and he's like, dude, look around. So I look to the left and there is splatter on the lamp. And there's splatter on the wall behind the lamp. <laughs> and I noticed that the side tables have been cleaned as well with bleach. But there's a little creepy handprint on it. Okay? And I'm taking pictures of all this. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it was great. No, that place has been condemned afterwards. It actually got condemned. I'm not even kidding. Um, and uh, there was splatter on the thing. I don't know what happened. It was all over the room. There was blood on the bottom of the door. And on the curtain, there was a handprint that like had held on and like jerked away. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I so, it is, and then it, we realized later, apparently, uh, I, I, right, at, right after um, all this had happened, he's like, dude, he heard the click, 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 and I'm walking around and they're like, oh my god. And uh, yeah, during click, 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 he noticed that the AC is not plugged in. It's not even plugged oh in. God. AC was not plugged in. <laughs> and I was leaving that day. I was like, you just have to sit there before I leave. And I was like, I'm going to get the out of here. No, I'm scared. I'm going to die. Someone fought and did not win. I was so scared of it. And they actually condemned that later. But the con itself that I was at was a great con. And it, it actually still is a great con. What convention was this? Oh, I don't want to say it because I don't want anybody to associate that story with the con in some sort of negative way. Like, I was talking because I love that con. It was a great con. But, wow. It was... But I can say the, the hotel. What was the hotel? It was a Ramada. It was a Ramada, but it, it was like the Sun Resort. Yeah. Or something creepy. Yes. Okay, and where, where was this located exactly? Like, in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> no idea. But wow. Um, that was the creepiest I remember. And I took pictures and I put them online. So they're online, you can find them, but you can't find them on my phone because my phone got destroyed accidentally. I jumped in the water and it was in my pocket. <laughs> pictures, bye bye. <laughs> Okay, so this is so funny. This are you what they tried to tell me was so funny. Okay, um, that's what that was the creepiest part about it. This is the funniest lie ever. Um, so, like in the state of Texas, 
if there was a murder committed or if someone died in a property that you were even renting, like before a day, which is a hotel, or anywhere, they have to tell you if you ask, not if you don't ask, if someone has been killed, murdered, whatever, in there. If you ask, it's a law. Apparently it is not the law everywhere because I found that out first of all with Greg in Kentucky, if you guys have heard that story. That's not a law thing. Um, and then I don't think it's a law here. I just don't think it is because this is what happened. I went out there and I'm like pale and sweating and freaking out. And I was like, you didn't listen to me, but I did. <laughs> and uh, I, was, I told them about it and they were like, oh, well, it was a CS, yeah, there was a CSI convention, so it was probably fake blood. And I was like, oh, except for that I do movies and I use fake blood and it's made of corn syrup and it dries pink. Does not dry brown and coagulated with hair in it. <laughs> I'm like, hey. More dedicated. Wow. So I was like, okay, apparently they don't have to tell us. But even afterwards, they were like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, we should have run it out of that room. I can't believe you did that. It's like, wow. <laughs> Woo, that was creepy. So I did have that one. That was weird. Maybe it's almost better if you don't know the truth. I have a lot of funny stories. Whenever I was in Hawaii um, with Lucy and Greg, and uh, Greg, there was a floating piece of dog poop that we spent the whole time trying to get away from us. <laughs> ah, ah, no, no, that's what you, it's coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was so creepy. Poop, get away. <laughs> Watch it, where the dog turns. We're in like this beautiful beach in Waikiki. This gorgeous diamond head is there, and it's just, it's all pretty, and there's just a dog turtle. <laughs> like, who did that? Wow. Someone is a winner. Um, but yeah. Anybody? Question? Scooby Doo did. Scooby Doo did do it. He did do it. Actually, he told me later, so I know that. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? <laughs> I like to eat things. Um, that's my favorite hobby is eating. Hmm? You like pie? I like everything if it's edible. <laughs> yeah, people are like, oh, I don't like Brussels sprouts. I'm like, I love those. I love beets. I love like a lot of really old people foods. Mmm. I like some. <laughs> what are those? What are those pickles? Bread and butter pickles. <laughs> those are so for old people and I love them. Oh. I didn't hear it. I even like tapioca and stuff. Everybody hates tapioca. I love that. The pudding? Mmm. I'll eat it. Have you ever tried to impersonate the Japanese one? Because you said that in the booth you have one side with Japanese and then you guys trying to do it in English. Have you ever tried to impersonate? No, that? it wouldn't even work that way because the, the languages are structured differently and the emphasis would be on different syllables in their read than it would be on ours. And also there's a cultural difference. There is a, it, it has to reach our culture. And um, it, it, there's things that are funny there that we wouldn't find funny here. I, was I did this thing called the Fukons, and um, nobody thought it was funny here because we couldn't change the script. You know, we could have made it funny, but it, it was like making fun of Americans, and no American's gonna laugh at making fun of Americans. They're like, what is this? I don't get it. Yeah, they're eating pizza. Ha ha ha. You know, so I don't, you know. Be, but sometimes stuff doesn't translate. Um, and, you know, of course it's our job to match the flaps and match the, the character, but we don't have to match the tone. And most of the time, their tones are much higher in pitch, and it doesn't really, it's not the same for Americans. Like, we don't speak the same, you know? Like, say, people who speak Russian, a lot of times people that are American and never heard Russian are like, why are they yelling? Why are they yelling at each other? But they're not yelling at each other, it's just how they speak their language. And, you know, so it's that kind of thing. There's, there's a difference, and it has to be translated. So I, I've, and most of the time, um, they're, they, they, they don't necessarily, we really, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't match the flaps. And we do. So sometimes it's not even possible, because, you know, she will be like, ba -da -da -da, and the flaps are like wide open. It's just like, nothing but this. And they're like, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. like, what? What? So we're like, ah! <laughs> like, yes, we did it. Um, yeah, or like, um, I remember when they were doing Nara, my Daikon brothers, it was music, and when you do music in a show that's Japanese, they do want their music protected. So it's actually really hard to come up with lyrics that sound the same as theirs in the same tune, you know what I mean, with the same music structure. So people have to really work hard on it. And the scratch tracks for Mermaid Melody were done by Scott McLennan, the director, and he's like a big Harley dude. 
And oh my gosh, she's singing like, When I looked at the sky, a oh, baby blue. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna get a motorcycle and a wig and we're so taping you over a rainbow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause it's just, I just see it like a motorcycle with the streamers. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny him singing those little, the pop songs, you know. Um, but when you do like something that has music in it, like Narama Daikon Brothers, um, Chris, the director, he, he talks about this and he says how he's limited, you know, because you have to still fit the music and the criteria for the music, but this flap is like wide open. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, it's okay, you can totally interrupt me, I don't mind. Um. As long as you want to, the next person shows up. Oh, no problem, I'm fine. Um, so, yeah, he's got this uh, big wide open mouth and he's trying to do this thing, and like, or no, 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 it wasn't even big wide open, it was this. But the music was like da na 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 and this is all he's doing exactly. And he's like, how do I match the flaps and match the music? So he, he's like, I can't beat the words of these flaps, so... <laughs> and he, whatever the, the tune is of it, but he says, I can't fit the words of these flaps in the middle of the show, and it's hilarious, I love it. Um, and that happened with us and some Mermaid Melody Pitchy Pitchy Bitch, too, where we're like, what can we do? But we, we couldn't do that, we didn't have the freedom in that one, because... Um, that one was like a two-year project. We had to like practice the music and um, yeah, you know, like the Japanese re revise and review everything that we do that anybody does in English. So you know, that's why it's so funny when people say about how like, oh, well, the Japanese wouldn't have wanted you cast it, and it's like, but they did because they they liked it. They wanted it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. What do you think is one of the most underrated series that you've been in that people don't really pay attention to but are really awesome? And it's like, got to be a tie between Gilgamesh and, Dark Gilgamesh and Darker Than Black. I really love Darker Than Black and not that many people have seen it. That is underrated. Great. And he, the Darker private eye voice. Awesome. Great job. And my character, Kiko, is obsessed with collarbones. And she stalks this boy that eats a lot of ramen because she really wants like collarbones and she like goes up to the detective and she's always talking crap to him oh. all the time. All she does is just talk mess to him. I always play those characters. I wonder why. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so like she goes up to him and she like, I don't remember exactly what she says, but she's talking really, really fast like I do. And she's like, oh my God, I really want to stalk this guy. He has awesome collarbones. Can you give me some stalker tips? She's like totally serious, and that was hilarious. I love that. And she's like, and it's it's in the, the actual character of her is obsessed with manga and anime, and so she's like a real life, you know, anime teen, anime loving teenager. So it was, I don't know. It was me. I really it's it's underrated. And Gilgamesh, like I said, is just like Soul Eater. It's not like Soul Eater, but it's um it's it's very underrated in that because it doesn't have um you know the aspects of anime that make anime anime it doesn't have all of them. So sometimes those shows kind of get overlooked if they have like, you know, they, if they don't have certain things. So, um, but yeah, that's a, it's a very good show. It has a really great idea. And um, my character gets all cracked out on Dynamis, which is power. And they, like share it through the forehead. But if you get too much, she gets like all messed up. It's awesome. She's obsessed with pigs. And I, that was when I first learned that pigs in Japanese make the sound boo. <coughs> I didn't know that. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's what they say. It's really cute, actually. But um, yeah, but I, I collect piggy banks, so anything with a pig makes me happy. Yeah, and teapots, because I'm old, like I said. I'm actually a really old lady. You just don't know it. Yes? Are you taking over? No. Oh, okay. See, I was like, okay. Um, yep. Your birthday was earlier this week. It was. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm old now. I'm not old now. I'm, I'm past 25 and it makes me sad. So I was like good at 25, so I'm like I'm right in the middle. I'm not getting closer to 30, but now I'm 26. So. I have you like on my Facebook, so when it came up, I was like, oh, I have to draw her a picture, but I didn't get a chance to. So. Oh, yeah, I have any. Oh, man, I need to go get on there and get. Um, yeah, I don't get on Facebook too much. I'm, I'm mad about it. I don't know why. Like I said, I'm kind of old timey. I don't really watch TV that much. I just like to do the stuff and cook and clean and make tea. Boring. <laughs> you knit. I don't knit. You know what it is? I would poke myself with those needles so bad. I'm the palettiest person ever. All you have to do is take a look at my hands close up and you're like, wow, you have a lot of scars. And I used to barrel race and um, did a lot of things with horses. And that was what I originally did before I did any theater and stuff like that. 
And uh, yeah, so I was always pretty rough with my hands. I'm not delicate. I'm not a delicate woman. No, I cannot dip. I cannot knit. I cannot do a lot of things. Like my food doesn't look pretty, but it tastes awesome. But it might look like vomit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's, if you, someone hands you a plate of vomit, it might be good. If it doesn't kill me, I'm good. Yeah, no, it doesn't look that bad, but it's just, I don't have that artistic touch. And I, I think I should put as much food on the plate as possible. Yeah. And so it doesn't look pretty. You know, small portions are pretty, but I'm like, I'm the text. <laughs> and I eat a lot too, so it's kind of insane. I'm like a garbage disposal. So you can just benefit from a longer plate. Yeah, of whatever you want to put on it. So like people, if people are like, you like that? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you ask me all day. I like, I like everything. Yes. You get a bowl to put your food in. A bowl? Hmm. I do like eating out of bowls. <laughs> a boat? Um, I have a canoe. I don't think I could eat all of it. <laughs> I have for a couple days, maybe. Maybe. I don't know if there's a hole in the side of it, so the food would leak out. But in the death notebooks, I always sign that I want to, or I always sign that I want to drown in a big pool of spaghetti. <laughs> big pool, not hot spaghetti, because that would hurt. <laughs> God, and people like spaghetti sauce. I'm like, no. Just the pasta. Feels good. <laughs> and then eat it as I die. Like, I want it. People are like, you want to do what? Can you smudge your way out? It depends on if the pool is made of spaghetti as well. I don't think so. I think, I don't know if you would sink or not, but I would be like, Let's get in there. Uh, yeah, I think that would work. As long as this spaghetti was slimy. I don't like dry spaghetti or mushy spaghetti. I want it to be all slimy and slippery. Right? <laughs> yeah. People are like, I have a texture thing. I'm like, me too. I like to touch everything. And smash it with my hands. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Like, don't give me a stress ball because that thing's over. <laughs> yes. What about ice cream? Do you eat ice cream? I eat I eat everything. But I live next to the Bluebell factory where my mom does. And so um, I'm spoiled with ice cream. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. Local cows. <laughs> Which I love. If you didn't know. Okay. Um, which of the characters that you've played would you say is most like you? It's hard because, like, I would say in personality type, mm, I'm a mix of some of them. Like, I'm, I'm definitely. I, there's a reason why I get snarky characters because I'm definitely a snarky character. Um, and there's, I mean, most of the characters I get kind of say what they think. You know, I'm very unlike Icarus. I'm very unlike that. But um, she was actually really fun to play. But I don't know, I'm kind of a little bit of all of them. I'm a lot like a Mecco, kind of crazy. So you might yeah. in there somewhere, huh? A little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of an in between of everything. Like, you know, I like Yamada, but I'm not a whore. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, obviously, like, that's wow. I mean, it, it, she's actually not, by the way. She's not. She just has those intentions, which are weird. And I don't, for some reason, I don't know if that's like what, I don't know, maybe that's what Japanese guys think that, you know, American women are like. I have no idea, but I'm like, where did you come up with that character? Because I did not meet her in middle school. I did not meet that girl. But, um, I don't know, it's so funny. I got so much flack for that one. And I was like, have you seen some of the titles I've been in? I am in way worse. I got Sekirei. Frigid, freezing. Um, I mean, all these. I've been some shuffle, huh? Shuffle. Oh, thank you. Birthday. Oh, yay! See, people are coming in for the next panel. No. No. Do, 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 do. No oh, do you know what song I always did not like? Mbop. Oh, why? Oh, and they all look like girls. I didn't like it. I didn't like the blonde. I don't like long blonde hair. Something about it. I don't mind long dark hair. I like it. I like blonde. Meh. Meh. Except for the guy in Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> yes. Um, anybody else?
Yes. Have you ever done voice acting for an anime or cartoon or whatever that you were aware of as a child? Like, for example, when that, like, auditions for blah, blah, blah. That's it. I'm gone. Um, I think I get things that just fall on my laps. We don't get to, I, because, uh, you don't, um, like, ADV, you don't really hear about the title until you get there. It's just, like, you're not in there enough. You have to be there to hear about it, you know? And, um, in Funimation, you could hear about it, but I only go up there, like, I, I'm not, I don't live there. I live five hours away. Or actually, like, five and a half hours away from Funimation. And so, um, when I record there, I go up there for maybe a full day, and then I go back. So, um, I don't, I'm not in all the loop and stuff. But, um, I don't know, like, like I said, like, black are gonna fill in my lap. Um, and then, just every now and then I'll get a script and I'm like, oh, this is, this is me. I should totally be this character. But, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, there, I, you don't hear about him soon, you know? Enough time to even know. Which anime character that you play eats a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blackstar eats a lot. Um, Who? Blackstar eats a lot. Yeah, he definitely eats a whole lot. You know that sound whenever he gets, uh, I don't remember who it is, but they put an elbow on his face. And he's like, oh. Okay, that sound was on accident. And it was hilarious when we kept it in there. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, I think, who put it on there? Liz did it. Liz did it. Did Liz do it? Uh, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, he's like telling him to shut up. And uh, she's like got her skin on his face. And actually, I didn't know what kind of noise to make, so I kind of laughed and like <laughs> and did this weird thing with my mouth. And they were like, "That's perfect." <laughs> and like, "Oh my god!" So it was, a, it was an accident, but it was pretty funny. I don't know if that was an answer. Um, who eats a lot? I don't, I'm not good at that, huh? I'm like, I'll kind of give you an answer. Um, <laughs> uh, who eats a lot? Himeko. Himeko dreams of crab. I could dream of too. We could be friends. Um, let's see, who else? A lot of them. I, I do play a lot of characters that eat a lot. They're like me. <laughs> I like to eat a lot too. Um, anybody else? Yes? Is there any anime character that's over, um, over 17? Huh, yes. In Requiem for a Phantom, she goes from a very little girl to, or not a very little girl, but a little girl to, um, older. In a very short period of time, like five years later, you're like, <laughs> yeah, right. What? Yeah, I don't get that. I was like, wait, she went from eight to twenty. How did that happen in five years? If that made any sense to me. It didn't. It didn't make any. Why did they have to say five years? They could have just changed that number. You know, it wouldn't have made a difference. Because you know. Yeah, she's yeah several years later. Anything, but no, it said five. We have to write five. It's five. It's because they wanted to keep the main characters in the high school. Yeah, but she wasn't in high school, was she? Uh, no, the, the other one. Oh, let me see. Um, I've played Ingrid and Freezing is older than high school age. Um, who else? I've played a couple. Narama Daikon Brothers, I play this old lady. <laughs> She's really funny. She just talks with her mouth full all the time. It's like, you were calling a pig. It's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully just acting. Any kind of acting works for me. I do a lot of like little commercials and uh, just did a radio spot for the um, Houston, Houston Museum of Natural Science. And I just did a like AT&T spot. You know, like I just, anything, any of it works. So, are you next? Well, I get to uh, make you come up here. You guys know who this is? Now he gets to talk about more interesting things than food. Oh, I was talking about food. I was talking about food. I know food. Doesn't food sound good? Mm, I need a bloody steak. Yeah, I just want to eat a bloody steak. And, um, I'm just going to take a nap here. So, okay, if you snore, I'm getting it on camera. Who, uh, who has questions for J. Michael Taylor? I'm sorry, I'm scared. Wait, 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 we can do that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do it with them. It's gonna be right. <laughs> 
die, Colin J. Michael Tatum!